In the past, people have relied on religion and spiritual experts to enlighten them about the world and to help them make important decisions. Today, data-driven decision-making is the preference for most people. Data is responsible for much of our modern day knowledge. In Data 101, we learned how to scrutinize this knowledge at its source, the data. In this video, we will discuss the future of big data and the influence it will have on global healthcare. Much of the medical knowledge we have is derived from patient health data, not laboratory experiments on lab mice. This principle is found not only in healthcare, but nearly all industries and areas of inquiry. Data is observations of the world around us. Combining this with statistical techniques, techniques can provide us with very useful information. However, as we learned in class, it is crucial to be critical of these conclusions as there can be biases or errors in the underly underlying data. Access to more and better quality health data can improve our ability to predict ep epidemics, cure disease, improve quality of life, and avoid preventable deaths. In this video, we will cover the current data challenges in healthcare, how the future of technology and big data will allow for large-scale health data networks that solve these challenges, and finally, we will analyze the benefits and dangers of such a system. Let's begin by examining the current healthcare data challenges. In this image, you can see the various health data generated for a typical American throughout their lifetime, from birth records to elderly health checkups. One of the biggest healthcare data challenges is that most of this data generated is lost or inaccessible. There are many different places, different medical institutions, pharmacies, government institutions, schools, and boards of education, and other places where this data is generated. And many times it is not stored properly or just lost. Many times it is stored, but patients, as well as scientists and healthcare professionals have no way of accessing the data itself. Another huge challenge is that data variety leads to difficulties in aggregating and linking data from different sources. For example, while a pharmacy might have the necessary health information from one medical institution on, what, on a patient, they might be lacking crucial data from a different one. Additionally, structured or an unstructured data can be difficult to transform and link together. Finally, data is not useful unless scientists can access it. Data privacy regulations, such as the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or HIPAA, restrict access to health data to protect individuals and patients. Unfortunately, this reduces the amount of useful information that medical specialists can collect. Now, thankfully, our chances of overcoming the obstacles that we just discussed looks bright, as incredible and rapid progress is being made in both the scientific and information technology fields that will help circumvent these issues. Now we're going to move on to the future of technology. In this little bit, we will talk about the past, the present, and the future, and how many different things have changed and how it has impacted healthcare and data as a whole. The first thing we'll look at is scientific technology. When thinking about scientific technology, especially with healthcare, there's a multitude of different things that are used to either monitor or display one's vitals when wearing. Not only that, but they've been out for a very long time, although the technology that's out now blows away what was around before. One of the most prominent wearables in our society now is the Apple Watch. The Apple Watch calculates things like steps, miles walked, heartbeats per minute, and much, much more. You could even develop a whole health profile that has everything about you, including what blood type you are. Apple calculates this data, collects this data from everyone that's willing to let them collect it and develops new and trending ideas, adding to applications based on this data. But with the Apple Watches and Fitbits, the questions still lie with the devices. Do they really help you improve your health? And is the risk of your data worth the reward? Now we'll move on to more scientific technology. Over the years, there's been much improvement when it comes to computing parts that people previously probably would have never thought of. 
the size of CPUs has drastically decreased and the power has just increased. When the iPhone 4 first came out, it was seen to be unbelievable. Now we have a processor that's probably half or a quarter of the size that's doing even more work than that phone was doing. But like I just was saying, the compression of storage size in what we now have doesn't affect the capacity in which it works at. In the bottom right, you can see the IBM 305 made in 1956. This was found on, found on Business Insider, but that's a pretty big machine holding only five megabytes of data. Now we have computers holding terabytes. That helps us overcome the first challenge that most of the data generated is lost or inaccessible. Now, because we're able to have so many of these terabyte hard drives and you know the next bullet point, cloud computing, you know, we're able to access this data and it's no longer lost. Then there's the making of 5G and just faster internet speeds in general, where data transferring is almost seamless. It helps us now be able to access that data within a moment's notice. Whereas before, it wasn't so easy. Finally, we'll talk about the future of scientific technology, but not only the future, on how we got there. So now, there's been a lot that's been talked about on how data is stored and how it's affected us as a society up until now. Based on where we started and you know the pace that we're going at, there's a lot of advancements that are soon to come. As I mentioned before, you can see this picture of the Apple Watch and the iPhone 4. You have CPU speeds that are relatively similar and RAM that is identical. The Apple Watch is maybe a sixth of the size of the iPhone 4, yet it holds the same processing power with probably a CPU that's even smaller. As said by Harvard Medical School, that there will soon be a wristwatch that communicates with tiny electrode implants that can be planted under the skin, providing full, real-time, continuously monitored heart rate. This is just like an insulin tracker where someone that needs their heart rate continuously monitored will only have to wear a watch and it will be very accurate. Not only that, but Harvard Medical School also mentioned something about band-aid sized patches that can be placed on the chest to record information for up to two weeks. So you might not need anything placed under the skin, you might just need to replace the band-aids. As you can tell, where we're trying to go with technology is only up. CPUs are only gonna get faster, storage is only gonna be smaller and hold more, and you'll be seeing watches that will blow away the iPhone 4 in the upcoming years. 03, the future of big data. While big data is currently in its infancy stages, the advancements in computer power that we discussed will lead to the following future characteristics of big data. Veracity. The information needs to be accurate and trusted. Misinformation must be avoided. Velocity. Information must be retrieved quickly to avoid wasted time on behalf of both healthcare workers and patients. Variety. Information from many different types of sources should be consolidated, streamlined, and accessible. In volume, the amount of storage must provide limitless room for an increasing amount of patients' information. The four V's seem to represent a set of rules that information architects aim to follow. But realistically, they are more so a collection of standards that must be balanced. This is because effective improvements in one V are very hard to implement without disrupting the performance of the system pertaining to a different V. For example, a high volume system with not enough storage can be upgraded, but this may occur at the cost of losing velocity in the processes of information recollection. 
revising the format and structure of the aforementioned data may have a much more beneficial outcome. As information architecture capabilities expand, the focal point of information systems must continue to address the four V's. Volume will continue to present a challenge as more and more patients are documented, with an increasing amount of information being stored about each patient. Velocity will remain important as healthcare providers tend to more patients with less time in between. Variety will become increasingly important as information architects aim to centralize information of various forms, covering various equipment and measurements, some of which have not even been discovered and implemented. Veracity will be a necessity in healthcare information databases as a lack of veracity can easily lead to a mishandled patient and quickly negate the positive performance in terms of the other Vs. The evolution of information technology strives to address these concerns, but there are other responsibilities that data architects must strive to appease. These include several obstacles that also conveniently start with V, including validity, viability, volatility, vulnerability, value, and visualization. As information networks enlarge, the only way that the healthcare system will be able to keep up is incorporating changes slowly and constantly building on the systems in place and the corresponding training that healthcare professionals have received. This presents a variety of other challenges. Changes can be attained by alternating focuses between the back end server centered technology that public health information systems rely on and the front end healthcare professional-centered interfaces that will be necessary for nurses and doctors to utilize in order to fully take advantage of improvements in information technology. As information systems eventually master the foundations of volume, velocity, veracity, and variety, even on an enormously large scale, there will still be potential improvements to refine. For example, the visualization aspect of the information could eventually prove to be the most important, as large chunks of information delivered instantly will still be useless if they cannot be easily navigated by the users that need to. This will require careful planning, development, and implementation on behalf of both healthcare professionals, user interface designers, and information architects. The Solution a large-scale health data network. The new technologies and capabilities we just discussed will allow us to collect, aggregate, classify, store, and analyze large amounts of data, as well as link databases with varied and unstructured data. Together, these things will allow us to create a large-scale health information database network. We will now turn to the benefits of such a network. The main benefit to the public as a whole is the new medical knowledge that will be attained as researchers and analysts gain access to crucial patient data. In addition, hospital interoperability will create a more efficient and effective healthcare system that can treat more patients in better and faster ways. Some of these benefits include advanced at-home monitoring for patients, strengthened care coordination among medical institutions, less stress on a busy healthcare institution information system, the capability to incorporate new helpful technologies as they are developed. The data that can be easily accessible and renderable for current and former patients. And finally, the transparency within healthcare so patients know what they're paying for and what kind of care they're gonna receive. One real world example of how health data can be useful is Google Flu Trends, which first started when researchers began estimating the number of people with influenza using Google search data. Now, it incorporates other various factors in its prediction algorithm. This work has become somewhat world famous since it allows prediction of specific local fruit trends sooner than does fixed point monitoring or other methods. A service of similar process could be easily used uh, in the current pandemic of COVID-19, which relies on social distancing to stop the spread. 
with the coronavirus flu tracker, a spread could be predicted in its infancy before it truly occurs, which would afford time for preventative measures to be taken. A lot of data in healthcare comes both advantages and disadvantages. So now, here are some of the dangers that come with data in healthcare. Now, the first danger we'll get into is the safety of your identity. The one thing that you have, aside from the person sitting next to you, is your identity. Now, no code is completely safe code. It's not impenetrable, even Google. So by you having all this data out there on any sort of site, it's still able to be hacked. And with this, you have social security numbers, birthdays, addresses, family members, etc. So things that you might want to keep private, maybe a surgery you got or something that happened to you that you don't want someone knowing about, well, it's not so private anymore. Although, as you can see, the HIPAA bullet point, HIPAA are laws that are in place to prevent things like that from happening. HIPAA fines pretty heavily practices and practitioners that disobey HIPAA laws. They can also give out jail time up to 10 years. So even though your data, your healthcare data is out there, it is in fact protected by the HIPAA laws. Although if, if businesses are hacked into and the hackers are not tracked down, well, there's not much people can do. Now, we saw that researchers at John Hopkins University, University and Michigan State University found that 194 breaches, or 66%, exposed sensitive demographic information like social security numbers, date of births, or driver's license numbers, impacting 150 million patients. Now, just think about that. Everybody's trying to hack now, and it's something that we have to look out for, and it's a danger to healthcare data. In his article on the development of large-scale health information databases in Japan, Ryuichi Yamamoto said that a single healthcare ID number will be created in a way that it cannot be easily tracked back to the original data, so that the information linked with the other ID numbers of the same person cannot be easily connected. As we learned in class, de-anonymizing data through method, methods such as cross-referencing can be made or it can be done much more easily than most people think. If we want to make medical progress, proper legislation must be enacted to provide the right people with access to health data while at the same time protecting individuals' privacy. If you would like to do more of your own research on any of the topics discussed in this video, a full work cited with links is available in the description. Thanks for watching.